Now there are a whole host of, of pests that affect New England apple orchards and it's one of the challenges that we have. It's one of the beauties of living here. If you look out here, uh, this is really an island of agriculture in a sea of forest, which is habitat for all sorts of insects. It's different than it is in other parts of the, the country. Uh, but that also presents challenges for us. Uh, and that is that we got a whole bunch of pests that live outside the orchard that view the orchard as either a place to eat or a place to lay eggs. Apple scab, plum curculio, apple maggot, oblique banded leaf roller, European red mite, oriental fruit moth, woolly, green, and rosy apple aphids, brown marmorated stink bug. Each year, these and other orchard pests challenge New England apple growers. Although pests come in many forms, the ones we're concerned with are members of the invertebrate and pathogen families, that is, insects, mites, bacteria, virus, and fungus. The most effective way to control their numbers is by using proven scientific-based practices that work better together than separately and that have positive long-term effects on the orchard. They make up the foundation of Integrated Pest Management, or IPM. Nearly all apple growers practice IPM. This especially makes sense in New England, where most growers live right on their farms. It is in their best interest to keep the land and water as clean as possible. They also stand to greatly reduce their two highest bills, chemicals and fuel, by following the five parts of IPM. See if we've got any scab. Prevent pest problems. Identify the pest. Set an economic threshold. Monitor pest and damage. Use a combination of management tools. This is Rogers Orchard, Southington, Connecticut. Uh, we're uh, an orchard that dates back to 1809 with the, uh, the eighth generation now. I'm here every week from kind of the beginning of the season, which is right at the end of dormancy of the trees when we're just starting to see bud break. As soon as we kind of get a sense of what the fruit set's looking like, we've moved into the summer, I'll come every other week um, just to check up on things, see what pest pressures are. I'm interested in learning the, the ecology of a certain orchard. Yeah. And every year I learn something new as a part of that. So to me, that's, that's a huge part of IPM is getting as intimate with those locations as you can, learning about past disease and pest pressures um, and how those vary depending on the year. What's the economic impact of doing a good IPM program? Apple scab, a fungal infection, is one of the most persistent problems in the orchard. Orchard sanitation is a really important part of scab control and every year we, we follow a pretty rigorous routine in the fall. So you're, you're already assuming that there's scab spores on your leaves that are falling to the ground. We'll come through and cut out all these suckers and everything so we're getting a pretty smooth uh, weed-free patch under the tree. We have what's called a flail mower and that basically has large hammers that can beat up whatever is on the ground. It, it mows the, the grass nicely, but also if there's a brush up to two inches thick and leaves, it'll chop. And basically by chopping the leaves into small bits, they'll decompose and those ascospores have nowhere to overwinter. And that can really reduce the populations that are, going, that are gonna be in your orchard in the next spring. So every, every fall, one of the last things we do in every orchard after harvest is go through and mow it as close as possible and our mower on the back of the tractor offsets so we can reach it all the way under the tree almost to the trunk. Other prevention methods include crop rotation, adding nutrients either to the soil or foliarly directly to the leaves, and planting pest resistant apple varieties. I'm Chuck Souther and my wife Diane and I own this farm. It's Apple Hill Farm in Concord, New Hampshire. We started this farm in 1978. It was a bare piece of ground and we were two kids just out of college 
that had a dream. Apple trees like uh, a wide range of nutrients. There's obviously the macronutrients, uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Uh, and in many regards, apple trees are unique from other crops. We're lucky in that uh, our soils here in New Hampshire have high levels of phosphorus, so we rarely add any phosphorus to the soil. And nitrogen is one of those elements that the tree, ha we have enough in our soils. If we need to add nitrogen, we typically do it foliarly. Potassium is the one, and you have to think of this on a sort of a holistic picture. We do remove upwards of 600 bushels per acre off from this farm. That's quite a weight of, of fruit. A lot of water in there, but everybody knows apples have a lot of potassium in them. So that is one of the elements that's physically being removed from the orchard. And uh, with soil tests, leaf analysis, and then actually calculating the bushels that left a certain block, we can calculate how much potassium we have to add back to the soil. Now there are other what we call micronutrients that the trees love to have. And those might be uh, calcium, magnesium, zinc, boron, manganese, uh, and copper to a, to a certain level. And those are all that we can fine tune with foliar applications of those micronutrients now. So apple orchards are really kind of unique little ecosystems. All the leaves fall on the ground, all the grass gets mowed, mulched back. And in our orchard, uh, we do practice where we take all the prunings off in the winter, we grind those up and return those right back to the soil. So the only thing that's removing is the apples. The warm weather has allowed certain pests that we usually don't see earlier in the year to emerge. These are early emerging woolly apple aphids and they call them woolly apple aphids because you can see there they have this cottony wool. Pheromones are chemicals that insects produce to attract other insects, especially mates. They are used in the orchard to distract, confuse, or trap pests. Yeah, just one in there. Um, how, uh, when do we have to change this lure, Brian? Uh, we can change that uh, next week. We had one okay. uh, oriental fruit moth All there. Right. And so we're uh, still low on that. That's just that's a one week catch. Yep. We trap all summer for Oriental fruit moth because we have we want to monitor that population over the course of the year. Um, in this area we have two to three generations, depending on the year, usually two not counting that overwintering. What apple scab is, is uh, it's really, <clears throat> it comes from a spore and the spores from the year before overwinter on the ground. When the weather starts getting warm in the spring, the spores orient themselves in the dead leaves on the ground and during wetting events, they shoot out and try to get up into the canopy of the tree. So when they, when an apple scab spore lands on an unprotected leaf, uh, you, you will get a scab lesion that will show up basically two or three weeks later. And what a scab lesion looks like is luckily we haven't found any in this orchard today, but it's almost like a fuzzy brown dot that will just continue growing that would it require you to spray uh, antifungal material to uh, arrest the development of the scab. Um, the reason why scab is so damaging is that when these lesions spread on the leaf, it interferes with the photosynthesis, so it really can shut down the whole tree if you get a bad scab infection. Furthermore, once these lesions start growing, they start making their own spores, and those spores can go onto the fruit, and then you get a scab lesion on a fruit, which looks like a, almost like a leathery brown, like, like a scab that would be on your skin. So that, that fruit is no longer, you know, number one fancy fruit, and that takes a big economic hit on the crop when you can't grow, you know, market-grade fruit.